Let's look at regularization, or in particular dropout regularization, in a PyTorch neural network and see how to set it up. This is a really a pretty easy process. I'm going to run this code that I put at the top of every one of the projects in this, this course. The first part just maps Google Drive. The second part determines which sort of an accelerator that we have going on. Uh, is it a GPU? In this case, it's going to be CUDA because it's an NVIDIA GPU that is provided in Google Colab. And then we're gonna use early stopping. Early stopping is just a technique that looks at the validation rate as the training rate is falling, what's going on with the validation rate, and let's stop as soon as the validation rate is no longer improving along with the training rate or, or error, I should probably say. We are using CPU. If you ever see that, I'll leave this in. Just go ahead and change the runtime type and put in an accelerator. I'm gonna use a particularly slow one. I have a lot of these available because I have Colab Pro Plus. You may not have that many. And now we have CUDA. We're gonna run this bit of code here. This loads in my sample data set that I created. The sample data set is really just a mix of predictive continuous and categorical values that you can use to perform both classification and regression tasks. So we run that so that it's loaded. And now we're going to actually construct the neural network. The neural network is pretty simple. It has however many input neurons that we have from that training set, and then 20 neurons in the first hidden layer, 10 in the second layer. You'll see that we introduce dropout here. Dropout is done layer by layer, and you perform some sort of a percent. That percent says that for each training step, we are going to remove, in this case, 50% of the neurons, not the same ones each time, and they'll be there in the final trained version. We don't keep them out permanently, but this just gets the neural network used to not depending on all those neurons being there. That prevents each of these neurons from becoming extremely specialized and memorizing things. It'd be like if you had a company and you told half the people to go home each day. You're not going to have specialists so much anymore where they're learning one particular thing really, really well because they're gonna to have to become adaptive. This works really well for neurons. Don't know how it would work in a real company. Probably not so well. So now we can go ahead and run the process. This is very similar to everything else that we've had here. The previous cross-validation examples. We're setting up cross-validation here. We're looping across the five folds so that we can have a training and a validation set for each one. Have a look at the earlier module and that will t tell you all about cross validation. And then here we set up the neural network and we are putting in these dropouts. Now I used much, much smaller dropouts here. I was not having as good a luck with the very cavalier get rid of half of them. And the rest is pretty similar. We're setting up the optimizer. We're using Atom like we've done many times before. And we, we, we basically go through and use early stopping on each and stop as soon as that validation love score is no longer improving. And then we, we can see here the results of the whole thing. The final root mean square is 3.42. This might not be a big enough data set to really take advantage of it, but this is one of the, one of the stronger features of deep neural networks is the dropout regularization. And of course, be aware it doesn't drop out those neurons all the way until the final version. This is just during training. 